What is it that Agile coaches do all day? That is definitely a question that a lot of aspiring Agile coaches or just curious people in general ask me. And I do have a blog post on that that I wrote a while back and I'll make sure to link in the description of this video here. But then I figured a little while has passed and I tried to then record what my day could look like and share it with you. You're going to see how I work on this one particular day because I felt why not just really follow what is it that I did in one day and let you decide how engaging or how weird that kind of job of an agile coach really is in the day to day. So in this video, I am just going to give a brief you know, a digest of what happened in one particular day for me working as an external agile coach for a particular company. I will not disclaim the name of the company or the name of the teams I've been working with, but I will show you what things did look like in that day. So let's get started. I should also mention that my days are not the same neither as an agile coach working for a client, but also I run my own company where I give training and coaching. So definitely one day is not the same or, you know, weeks are very different. But today we are really just going to look at one day as an external agile coach working remotely. If you're interested in the other part, how I conduct my trainings, how I prepare for training, how I prepare my course and etc. Just let me know in the comments and I'll make another video about that. So let's get started with this day. I am a breakfast person. I usually say no to anything, any meeting, even friendly, casual chat before I've had my breakfast. That's just how I roll. That being said, I do get up quite early in the day. So for most people, when they, they want to meet early, I've been already awake for quite some time. Then the next thing I do before I engage with people is that I look at my calendar first. I do that every single day and, you know, I like to look at how the day is going to be, how many meetings do I have. And then that particular day, if I look here again, what it looked like, quite honestly, uh, it, it was uh, a busy day. I had some time to think, but it was quite busy and I like to know exactly what's going to happen more or less anyway, understand what I need my headspace to be, what that first meeting really is about. So in that case, I had a little bit of free time, so it was not a terrible day, but it was a busy full day of work for sure. I joined the team for their daily scrum. I don't do that often, but there was a new scrum master. She wanted me to join, so I do. And when I join, I mostly listen. If I notice something is off, I might ask a question. I might say something, but I always speak last. Then right after that, I had a, a quick chat. It was an impromptu chat with the scrum master of that team. It's something that she uh, she wanted to talk to me for a while and uh, she was new in that team and I was about to leave as well. So it was a very timely encounter and we just chat scrum master things, you know, and uh, and that's not uncommon actually that I would have impromptu meetings like that with people that just want to discuss something that is either important to them or that is related to the whole group, the whole team, the department, etc. I also did not give any advice, although Agile coaches can give advice. I have a whole video on that. You can uh, look at it here. It was just an informal chat, playing back to each other, some of the things that uh, how she was doing, ideas that she had, and I'm all for it. So next in the agenda, I had time blocked to actually look into some materials. I think you should always do that. Don't just think that you have free time and leave your calendar without things really scheduled. If you don't schedule that time, people might ask for a meeting invite in there. So even when you're going to study and look into things, block time in your calendar. I do that. And what is it that I was looking into? It was roadmap stuff. So you know, one of the things that I, I think you should remember is that it's totally normal to check back on resources. You don't need to remember everything by heart. You know, you might have a great book, a few articles that you are looking into. I'm recently looking into some um, older magazines. I love the Harvard Business Review. It's not sponsored, but I just love the, the publication. So I think it's always great that you go back to materials. Don't 
think that you have to keep everything in your mind. And in particular, I had um, to prepare for a chat with the director about roadmap and how things should look like in a roadmap. What are some of our options? And I basically wanted to look into the material, prepare my pointers, make sure I have a case to make, show up prepared and ready. I never wing things. If that is you, that's great. But I think it never hurts to be prepared for a meeting. Then I had the meeting and it was short and sweet. It was a 30 minute meeting. I was really happy. I had checked back on my resources and I had my pointers with me. It was very useful. Everything went smooth and to the point and it was fast. Then comes lunch time and I wish I could have B-rolls of these things, but I can't for the life of me record those things very easily. I'm chaotic in the kitchen, but Here's what happens. I get up early, so I eat early. By noon, I do have to go eat and I don't book anything at this time. My mind is not in a good place. I really only accept things that have to be in emergency. Now, I work from home and I like to cook whenever I can. It's really great. And I like to have the time to really sit and have lunch with my husband and enjoy some time just not looking at the computer. Then comes the afternoon and I had this one-on-one uh, -on, -one on Scrum with a new team and it's a team that's starting with Scrum and I do have a few favorite activities when the team is new to the, to the framework and we only have so much time. So I did share in the social media a while back and I, I make sure that it's shared here in the community section on YouTube. I do have this one activity for introducing Scrum to any team in two hours or less and I think it's really fun. Next, I had what I call a virtual coffee and those can be just for socializing, but they can also be for overcoming little hurdles. I book that with my peers, with people that I'm coaching and anyone really, just to make sure that I have the time in the calendar. I scheduled everything. And in this case, it was just a check in with this colleague, but then she was talking to me about her pain points with a particular tool. So why not? We had that time together. Off we went looking into the tool together and uh, figuring out some of the things that she wanted to do. And I was uh, very aware of what to do. It's the Azure DevOps board. I love that tool. So off we went and solved her problem in a single meeting. And I'm glad and I also paid attention to because that meeting could have very easily overrun and I wanted to have a little bit of breathing time because right after I had a call with a few senior members of the leadership team and we were discussing about effectiveness and efficiency and the whole point was showing them why efficiency is not really what they were actually after, not at this point in time. So I always like to not be into back-to-back -back meetings and that's why I like to keep my meetings really into their time box whenever I can. And this one was a big, important one scheduled way ahead of time. So it all turned out really well. Next, it was all coming back to that product roadmap piece and I was preparing the room. I really scheduled time for that. So time to prepare the, the mirror boards and just check technology, make sure that everything is ready for when we have the full quorum in the workshop. Nobody needs to look into technology. So we had that workshop. A lot of uh, product owners came in and we were just discussing what could look like for the new roadmap format. And it was a very interesting, very engaging discussion, but I never keep those things very long, especially when working remotely, but even in person. So it was, you know, there was no major event. It, it all went really well. Everybody was excited. And I guess we can consider that one a success. Finally, I have a weekly meeting with my senior sponsor and in that meeting, we look into our definition of success for my engagement as an agile coach. And we discuss what happened since we last spoke. I think you should be having those if you're not already. I know your senior sponsor should be knowing what is it that you're doing. And together, you, you'll be looking specifically into the future and know where you should be placing your focus since time is a limited resource. And then before my day ends and I really log off for the week, one of the things that I really like to do is do a quick recap of my day and the lessons learned. And it's really simple. I recommend that you have your own prompts, but I think it's always good to look into what took my energy. Was anything draining? Was anything difficult? 
what gave me energy. So look for those things that really get me energized and being very explicit in asking myself, what have I learned today? Then I do a very quick check-in on tomorrow's schedule because nobody wants to discover the next day that they missed an important meeting. So I do that every single day before I log off. I have an idea of what's going to happen. And if some very weird last minute meeting was booked first thing in the morning, I will not know and I will not stress about it. Either you book me in advance or you deal with the consequences of it. And in particular, the next day was not with this client at all. Remember in the beginning of the video when I said I run my own business and sometimes my schedule is different. It's either with another client or clients or doing something else different for my business. So that's the case here. The next day I had no activities with them and uh, I still check my calendar to know what are these other things that I will be doing tomorrow. So that what happens in a day in a life for an agile coach. I hope you enjoyed it, my friend. Like I said, no day is similar and sometimes they are much fuller <laughs> and sometimes they are way easier. I did try to pick a day that I knew there was enough interesting, diverse stuff going on so that you can have an idea of what it could look like. Maybe you are an aspiring agile coach or scrum master and those are pretty similar in their day to day. And uh, I hope this gets you excited. I hope you answer a few of your questions. But if you have any more questions, let me know in the comments down below. And for now, this video ends here and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.